in general. I'm, I'm looking into a lot of different ways of using it um, as an artist and also as an entrepreneur, um, as an instructor, just looking into how it's going to change education, stuff like that. Um, but I have not made an FD yet. I'm, I've been mostly doing a lot of research, trying to, I'm not trying to rush into it, just trying to do it right. Um, mm -hmm. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, instead of going with a platform, I'm going to publish it on my own, um, like on my own website. And see yeah, how that goes. <laughs> I, think that's we'll a, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a great idea. I mean, it's kind of ironic because uh, a lot of these platforms, you know, uh, are inherently kind of centralized, right? Like, uh, Kinda, yeah. what, what I do, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, exactly. Like ideally you should be able to go to proto.com forward slash NFT or something. And like you own that, you know, as much yeah. as you can, uh, obviously even the, even domains are not really, truly yours. You're, you're renting your domain, uh, you know, well, you can have domains on the blockchain now, but now, yeah, exactly. So now you can have proco.eth or, or whatever. So, yeah. Um, I need to buy. I need to go get Sahel.eth before somebody else does. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> do it right now. I know. Uh, well, uh, it will be a good story. I'll I'll pay ten x whatever the the last person paid, I guess. Um, and the next famous Sahel will you know, yeah. will will pay me out. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I also you know I would love to ask just generally how you how you got to where you are today. I mean, you kind of had you came from like kind of a traditional background i guess right like that would kind of be what it would call classical kind of painting and then yeah the, sort of atelier style and then now you have an in, insanely massive audience uh you know so like how did you yeah how did that kind of transition happen and like you were you know yeah I'm kind of curious about that um so yeah i, I started by teaching at a at a school local school here you know 20 people classrooms um and that's where i really learned how to how to draw, how to paint, how to teach. That's where I got my crap. You know, I, I honed my crap. Um, but I was always into like just new things, new technology, looking for cool stuff. Um, you know, learning how to program as a, as a little kid. Um, and so while I was teaching at Watts, I started a blog trying to, and that was, that was when blogs were the thing, right? That was like when YouTube wasn't the main way of being a content creator, right? It was blog days. Um, and so I started a blog uh, making tutorials. Um, and then that kind of got big, but then YouTube started getting popular. So I was like, let's try YouTube. Cause I already had some experience making videos. I, I had some animation experience. And so that, to me, that felt more fun. It's like, oh, great, let's do video. Um, and immediately it took off because, um, I think it was because of my focus on quality. Um, and again, instead of like rushing into something, really planning it out and making sure you're doing it well. Did you, um, did you, at the time was YouTube, like, did YouTube have drawing tutorials? They were just really terrible quality. It, they, yeah, there were drawing tutorials, but they were very like homemade type, right? There, there was very little focus on production quality. Um, I don't think there was much editing at all. It was mostly stuff like, you know, you, you have a camera, you start it, <laughs> you press record, you talk and draw, and then you publish that video. You know, it, it was very raw. Um, and I went into it with scripted videos or that I planned out, you know, for weeks um, and had animation in it. Um, I mean, at first the animation was really simple. It was just like blue lines animating over my face, showing like st the structure of the head, right? Like the geometric shapes that I'm talking about. But that alone, just that little thing was like enough for people to be like, whoa, wait a minute, <laughs> what is this? Um, and it was enough to like, to share it just because of that little, increase in quality um because it it set it apart eventually i started you know doing 3d animation with like full anatomically accurate um you know muscles and bones and tendons all over the body um with skelly he's a little character um and yeah that starts to get expensive but you know you work your way up to that 
but yeah, always I always had a big focus on quality, and I think that's what uh, got me growing pretty fast on YouTube. Gotcha. And what what year was this? 2012. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I do think that is like people underestimate, like a lot of people are like, oh man, there's so many people doing X, Y, Z. Like it's too late for me to get started as a creator on this journey. And it's like, well, you could like, you might be surprised. Like you, you may be surprised at like how, like you can, like there, there, are, there are sort of dimensions in which you can be the best, right? Like you can produce the best quality or you can be the funniest. Like there's often ways to like, to sort of differentiate yourself and, and be the best at something. Yeah, and I think when yeah. people see someone who's already got a large following, they don't think about, you know, the nine years that I've been doing it. They think like, oh, I can't have that right now. Um, it's like, well, yeah, you can't, you know, but you yeah. can probably get it much faster than I did. And, I, you know, it took me nine years to get to two million. So, you, you, you could probably do it right now on YouTube in like a year or two if you, you know, if you do it right. <laughs> so it's actually a lot easier there's a lot more people on youtube now and the algorithm actually uh doesn't care as much about the channel anymore as it does about the individual videos so if you just make really good videos you're actually more likely to to grow a following um than you were nine years ago yeah it's it's funny the the this whole beeple kind of 69 million dollar auction thing uh it's, it's pretty fascinating. I, I tweeted yesterday. Uh, I was like, you know, the, the lesson here basically is like this guy created and posted art for 5,000 days. Like, I think people are missing that yeah. point. Like there's something right. like an artist who's ma who made $69 million. Right. And it's like, well, he's one of very, very few who have been, who did this thing. Right. Like he's, right. and so, you know, like it's not $69 million because of a meme. Right. Like it wouldn't have worked without, the 5,000 days worth of consistent effort. And so I, I've said like, basically, you know, you, if you do this, if you create art and post art for 5,000 days straight, you will also make $69 million, uh, which I think is obviously it's not entirely true, right? Like not, not a hundred percent of the time will that happen, but, <laughs> no, uh, but never, but, <laughs> but I, yeah. I would, I would argue that the people who actually do stick with it that long do you know, uh, there, there, there are many people who, who do, I mean, startup founders basically do this, right? Like Gumroad is a, is a piece of art that I'm constantly publishing every day. Uh, so I think if you can think in your audience, this sort of make money while you sleep, this is kind of an example. I think, you know, if you can do that, yeah. then effectively you kind of have that daily compounding that leads to that, that success over time. I think there's a, there's a more fundamental thing here though, that like people focus on the 69 million, they focus on the 2 million followers. And that's not the point. Like when I started my YouTube channel, I wasn't trying to get 2 million followers. When Beeple was starting his, you know, drawing a day, he was not trying to make $69 million. That's not the purpose of this. Like if you go into it just for that, you're not gonna get it. Um, like you have to go in there doing something valuable. Like when I started making my videos, I was doing it for free. I wasn't even trying to make money. Um, I was just like, I, I want to make cool tutorials that people can learn from. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, and I, I mean, I think you, you also <laughs> enjoyed, you enjoyed the process more than I think many others would have, right? Like the process of scripting. Yeah. And so I think you found the thing that you, you know, you your angle on it that you could sort of do exceptionally well. And most, most, you know, the, that the sort of 5,000 days straight is a lot easier when you actually enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy doing those, of course, those yeah. things, right? Like, uh, and that's a good filter too. It's like, you know, if you're not willing to do this for that period of time, like you should just not even start, frankly, right? Because it, it's going to take a lot longer than you think. Uh, certainly, like, I wouldn't have started Gumroad if I knew the journey. I would have picked a different problem, I think. But, uh, uh, yeah, so, you know. Yeah, that, that's my my take right now as well. Is like, I have a lot of new projects come in my way all the time and that I have to say no to. And my my question is always like, do I want to do this? Is this something I'm going to enjoy? Or is this just something that's going to make a lot of money? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is like, it's just going to make a lot of money, I usually ignore it and just say, whatever. Like, cool, index funds, oh, wonderful. 
I don't know anything about it and it sounds extremely boring and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I could do, I could get into it and I could probably, you know, get good at it if I really try and then be depressed because I hate my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, some people really love that, right? Like if somebody just loves doing math and like taking risks every day like that, like cool, but I, that's not my personality. Yeah, so you guys and just like you learn about yourself. Yeah, and it, it it's sort of like I think it's 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 nonlinear. You know, like it's not like every day you 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 get like ten points on you know on top you know, sort of ten experience points. It's kind of like you get zero or ten for a bunch of days, and then randomly you get like a million points. But if you didn't show up that day, <laughs> you wouldn't have you know you wouldn't get that opportunity. You wouldn't you wouldn't have hit the pay dirt, which I think <laughs> interesting. But why do you say that? I don't I don't see that like. I, I don't remember a day where I got like, oh really you know, you don't think yeah. there was a video that you like that sort of like the eye drawing video that you have that like kind of transcends like a lot of the other videos um, you... well feel free to push but, back by the way I, I'm, I'm not you know this isn't doctrine <laughs> yeah um, I mean all of those videos started with a few thousand views and then they slowly grew to millions like you know with my channel. Like mm -hmm. right now you go on it and you see how many views they have right now. But yeah. when you look at how much they had in the first year, it, it was under a million, it, you know, it, it was it, today in today's world. Like you would look at that view count and be like, Oh, cool. Like that's, that's a video. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, that, no, you're totally right. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's a really, I mean, that's a really good point. Like, uh, you know, it's so easy to look at. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of similar to the people stuff, but like when you YouTube is a really good example of this, where you like look at this historical content, and it's like the reason these videos have all of these views is because you also like kept going, right? Like every new video that you produce, like some of that, like some new person is going to discover you, and then they're gonna go consume, like I did, like go consume like hundreds of your videos, right? And then eventually buy your courses and all these sorts of other things. Uh, yeah. So that that library of content, like is content is, is phenomenal because you produce it once and you might get a thousand views, you know, or whatever, but like it's there literally forever, you know, for better or worse, like these videos are going to be around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, that's actually one thing that I think I, I found artists really struggle to, to get with this concept of creating evergreen content that just keeps making money and keeps adding value to the world. Um, instead of doing you know doing things for your time mm -hmm. um <clears throat> like even right now when online education is so big and videos are like everybody watches videos to learn some instructors just they just like their first intuition is like okay i gotta i gotta like make a patreon that um where i have like one-on-one -on -one meetings with people um, and that's cool. Like that's totally needed. Um, but I've seen people that are just like, they're just trying to figure out how to make money. Right. Like they're like struggling. They're, they're, they're talking to me. I'm like, man, I, I, I need to make more cash. So, like this is hard and whatever. And that's their goal, their goal right now, or that's their plan right now is to just like put in some time to, uh, to do things that will never pay after they're done with it. Mm -hmm. And I just, it's, I don't know, I, I, people just don't grasp that concept for some reason that like you could just be making something that can continue to add value. It'll stay there after you're dead. Um, yeah. You know, like the really good books that we all get for learning how to draw, like these guys are dead. But like more people are learning <laughs> from those books today than they were when those books came out. Yeah. Like that's what you need to do. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think you you need to be you need to make really really high quality content that you believe is going to be valuable ten years from now. And like a lot of the a lot of the stuff that you teach is right. Like as long as humans have like the same rough anatomy, uh, your, your <laughs> videos will be perpetually valuable. Like you you picked a relatively stable uh, topic, right? I kind of yeah. I mean, <laughs> un until Elon Musk's what's his company called? Oh yeah, New makes Orleans? us all into cyborgs and yeah. So <laughs> how how are you thinking about online education now? Like you kind of mentioned, a lot of these creators are the first step. Often is this kind of 
it's kind of, you know, it makes sense. Like it's kind of the next step up from maybe charging purely for your time is now you have like a, some, you know, it's funny that people often use Patreon as like a, basically a, like a scheduling tool, like how barbers use Square. Uh, <laughs> but it's the start. Like, it's, you know, it's good to yeah. like dip your toes in and then you can scale your time further over, you know, but how, yeah, how do you, how do you think about scaling yourself now? And especially around all this online education stuff that's happening in the last, last sort of 12 months. Scaling myself or, or Proco? Or, or yeah, Proco, the business. <clears throat> um, well, right now what we're focused on is, is bridging the gap between former formal education and online education, because right now that transition is happening faster and faster, especially with art. Um, like, I mean, the pandemic pretty much sped it up by like 10 X. And so now people are going online to study art and there's some disadvantages to that. Um, Marshall Vandruff and I, we have a podcast called Draftsman and last season we had a series on recreating art school where we talk about all the great things about art school and how you could do it on your own. Um, and some of those things are actually really important to, to be mindful of and not just, you know, just go through these videos and watch them. Um, those things are community, uh, feedback, and structure. Those are the three big ones that I think need to be recreated. And, and the student has to, right now, focus on actually getting that stuff for themselves if they're, fo if they're studying online. Um, the community aspects, is, it's like you go to college, you, you make friends, you guys, you know, you, you go to coffee shops together, you draw, you go to museums, you, you get high and you talk about art and your favorite artists, <laughs> like, you know, you, you make bonds and you, th that kind of thing is inspiring and um, it keeps you motivated, right? It, it, it gives you ideas and it, it makes it fun to be an artist. Um, and that's really difficult if you're just studying online. Um, so there needs to be a drastic improvement in community. And I don't mean like social media community, like where we just like cancel each other for every <laughs> little mistake we make. I mean like more, more communities that um, represent more of what like real life communities are like. And also online communities that drive engagement in the real world as well. Um, yeah. So if you're in a school, an online school, and you're taking the same class with people, you know, if there's a thousand people watching these videos that, are, that you're watching, and like three of these people happen to be in your city, like, why not know about that and meet up with these people and draw together and like, you know what I mean? Like this sort of thing isn't, I mean, maybe it is out there, I haven't seen it, but like most schools, it's just leave a comment under the video. Um, yeah. There's no, yeah, yeah there, it doesn't exist right now. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's insane. So that, that's what we're focused on right now is like the community aspect. And the, the other part is uh, getting feedback um, on your work because you go to school, you're an instructor, you get feedback on a regular basis. Um, online, it's a little bit harder um, to get good feedback. You don't know who you're getting it from. So we're going to be making features that improve that ability and also incentivize all the advanced students who are taking the class to to help each to help the big more beginner students. Um, <laughs> do you hear that? <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. Oh, dang it. Oh, right. man. Uh, right, uh, let me know if it gets really annoying. There's sure, someone sure, doing sure. construction next door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's, it's online education is in, and every creator should be thinking about education, like the 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 number one way that creators get paid is by teaching the next generation of creators that's at least what what i see from from my vantage point like if you're a musician you know very few musicians make a living off their music uh but a lot of them make music teaching oh sorry <laughs> make a living teaching like, uh, uh, teach, teaching uh you know other people how to make music right like i would take a right. i don't know a course from wolfpack on on learning bass or, or something like lost something like that um and it's really fascinating because yeah i think a lot of people that i talk to they they just kind of assume that this stuff exists on the internet because it like it it obviously it kind of should like there was this whole wave of online education with coursera and udemy and 
all of these, mm-hmm. you know, Skillshare and all of these companies. But you're you're totally right. Where like I feel like there was like the first stage of online education that's happened, which was basically just like we we kind of just put all the content online. Yeah. All the information is now out there. Like you don't you don't go to school for the information anymore, uh, unless I don't know. There's some sort of super esoteric field or something. But generally for these like sort of mainstream topics, right? Like you can find this stuff online for free. Often the universities themselves are like putting it out there for free. Uh, yeah. You know, like every, almost every class I've taken, I could have taken for free. Like I was just paying for, I was paying for exactly what you said, the structure, the community, the social sort of the social dynamic uh, and the motivation, like the motivation to keep going, like to put in those 5,000 days, like it takes a community of people like rallying around you because you're not going to feel like you want to every time. You kind of need the gym buddy equivalent, right? Um, yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, I feel like that's the, the big shift, the big trend we'll see in, in the online education creator economy kind of in the next five years is going to be basically like really just replacing the university. Like, can we take all of the things that art school or any secondary sort of institution provides, uh, and just do it better online, like figure, figure that out. Uh, and like right now, like what I tell people is like, I, I did a course, it did pretty well. Like it's a six figure course, like it'll, it'll do great, but it was like Slack and zoom, <laughs> like tools built for, uh, you know, enterprise basically, uh, like used to run a course, like a creator course for a hundred people. Like it makes no sense, but that's the only, that's like the best tooling we currently have. Yeah. So what, what has your approach been to actually building that? Uh, and we'll open it up for questions. So anyone uh, is welcome to uh, raise your hand and ask, uh, I'll, I'll bring you up to the stage, but, uh, yeah, what is your, what is your kind of take? Uh, how, how have you approached that for yourself? I think you, you take a sort of a, what I, I love your approach, which is like, you just, you take ownership, like you're actually building a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, using your, on your own website and using your own yeah. tech stack, et cetera. So I'm, I'd love if you could kind of elaborate on that. Yeah, I mean, and we're, we're launching process. basically a new platform, a new website that I've been working on for the past three years or so. Um, it's going to be launching in May. Um, yeah, right now it's it's been in beta for about a year, um, but it's when we launch, it's going to be it's going to be uh, an MVP. Like it doesn't solve the problems that I just described. Like it's the beginning of it, and like we just have to launch something right now. <laughs> like we've been working on it for three years. And it's good, like it's it's good right now, but then we're gonna launch and then we're gonna just keep rolling out new features that support this goal of improving community feedback and structure. Cool. Um, but yeah, I like my, my approach to it. Yeah, ownership to me is huge. Um, I've never taken funding from anybody, um, like, you know, no investment money, I've always, tried to add value and then I get value in return and I, I invest almost all the money I get back in back into my company back into making more value for people um, and until you you know you get to the point where you you have a lot of money to hire a bunch of developers and, and build a platform and then you don't need to give away you know 80 percent of the company mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's ownership is huge, which is why I really love blockchain as well. <laughs> it kind of changes a lot of things for for artists as well. Yeah, I mean, it it allows artists effectively to go direct, right? Like you can you can raise money yeah. from your your community, your fans, instead of having to to go sort of meet a bunch of investors and or you know get a yeah. get a loan or debt or or, or something something like that. Um, welcome to the stage. We got a few folks. Um, we'll, we normally we start sort of like you know English reading left to right, top to bottom. So Yasin, you're up first if you have a question for Stan. Yeah, thank you, Saya, for inviting me. Thank you for the opportunity, Stan. I just looked at your YouTube channel and I have uh, listened to you guys talk about the education. And in my opinion, the thing about learning on the internet, I personally as an eighteen as an eighteen year old. The stuff I learned from the internet is far more valuable than anything I learned in in high school for the past high uh, for the past four years, and the accessibility we have it's it's a fact that uh, the education is better. But I think the um, the problem is with the internet is especially with people at a young age with the um, chaotic uh, time schedule and everything. It's hard for them to create or follow a curriculum and then follow follow it and get something done. 
uh, when you're getting the information, you're getting multiple information, but you don't know how to organize it, which is something I didn't know how to do until I got on Clubhouse and I um, met other people and they gave me they gave me feedback and I didn't know how to get feedback or ask for feedback. In fact, I was very shy. And here in groups, like I'm interested in finance, we can trade together on, on in rooms. We can do a lot, a lot of stuff. And especially with artists here, um, with artists, you, you can, it's not anymore that art isn't becoming a bad thing to go as a career. Uh, you can go in art and artists are making a lot of, a lot, a lot of connections, especially here on Clubhouse. You can meet people like-minded and make, make a living out of it. Just being with creatives, it's it's such an amazing um such an amazing feeling me as myself being with creative people i'm creative myself and i can see that i am privileged and i have uh done a lot of stuff that i managed to uh get unstuck it's all about the thinking and executions so yeah i'm done speaking at all that's what i wanted to add thank you for inviting me sahil again and stan okay no question there, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no question. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's try to let's try, to let's try to keep it to questions. Um, that's that's what that's what this is. Uh, this is mostly here for Amy. Welcome to the stage. Do you have a question? Hi. Yes, I do. Awesome. Hi, fan. I'm a huge Hi. fan. Um, when I was going through some autoimmune stuff two years ago, I was kind of like stuck in bed and decided to re, you know, reconnect with my art roots and get the Draftsman podcast really. Just, I would listen to it. I would walk to Starbucks and sit in the sun and avoid everybody. But that was how I got through that situation. So thank you for allowing us to learn asynchronously. Um, I think what the previous speaker was talking about was important. But yes, a question. So getting bigger Before I ask on YouTube, you a question, that's awesome that you, you walk to Starbucks and, and while well, listening, because I usually walk to Starbucks and get my, my son in right before I start recording the Draftsman podcast. So. Really? Oh, that's such a great <laughs> yeah. synchronicity. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. we're on Go the ahead. same wavelength. Um, the coolest part of the podcast to me is um, the relationship you have with Marshall and the dynamic you have. You're both from different backgrounds. Like You sound like different people. Have, and I love the little arguments you get into, um, teasing and, and but not going too far. Um, how do you how do you find the right person to get into a dynamic with? Because that's the most interesting part of what sucks me into content. And if the content is good and, and quality, I'll stay there. But I love the honestly, come on, I love the drama. Everybody loves relationships and watching it <laughs> yeah. unfold. So thank you. Yeah. Oh man, that's a tough one. Yeah, like I I wanted to start a podcast for a while, or or not even a podcast, just some kind of show. Um, like the, the reason I actually started a YouTube channel, one of the reasons is I used to be a fan of Dignation back in the day. I would watch, uh, like every night I would just watch Dignation and I love Dude, it. Me too, uh, man. I love freaking love yeah. Dignation back in the day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. And I just loved the, the, um, the, the relationship. It was just the dynamic between Kevin, um, and, um, what, oh, shit. Dan, Alex, Dan, Dan, Alex, Albrecht. Alex, yes. Yeah. Um, and um and i was just like man i want that that, that that'd be so awesome <laughs> to have a show like that and, and i want know, a bestie I, ended up starting it. <laughs> I want a friend um oh my god but, relatable <laughs> yeah but no i ended up just so I, I think what i ended up doing was just like okay i'll start with just like some kind of show like a i know education i'll just start teaching but then like i, I think once you know somebody that would be a good dynamic make a good duo with you you kind of just know based on the conversations you have with them regularly like when marshall and i talk we can talk for hours about and like the conversations are always really interesting like i'm i'm taking notes all the time he's taking notes all the time i'm taking and... notes all the time <laughs> while you guys are talking <laughs> yeah like we we talked for i mean we knew each other for many years before then we were Eventually I came to him and was like, why don't we like have some of these conversations and record them? How do you um, have that convo without it being extremely awkward? Like, hey, uh, do you want to just <laughs> well, record everything we're saying? <laughs> well, I mean, it does get awkward. <laughs> <laughs> we make it a thing to make an awkward intro every time. I do love the it's awkward part of our, uh, <laughs> It's part of our brand now. But <laughs> I mean, 
Oh, geez, sorry about the banging, guys. That. <laughs> um. Should I move? I no, no, hear. no. You're good. Honestly, it's probably more annoying to you than it is to us. So okay. It. it feels like it's in my ear, but okay. <laughs> if you can't hear it that much, then that's fine. Um. So. In the beginning, like anytime you do anything online, when you put your face in front of a camera, like it's awkward. Um, it's something new. It's a, it's a new social experience. Any new social experience is awkward. Um, like you've never talked to thousands of people before, probably unless you've been on stage or something somewhere. But, um, and so, yeah, it's awkward. And then you just gotta, you gotta keep doing it until it becomes normal. You know, so like just embrace my inner Ako Taco. Kind of. I mean, you're not awkward right now at all. <laughs> so I'm okay. Of... Well, it's okay because my face is not involved. <laughs> when my face gets involved, things are different. okay. But thank you. Yeah, yeah. I could, I could. I mean, I could see that. Like, it, it, once you once you think people are looking at you, you start thinking about your face. <laughs> this is and why then... I'm, I gravitate to the art stuff because I really enjoy um, watching people's procreate. Twitch streams and where it's more like a conversation with art, but I don't know how like big that could be. You know, how do you get big without your face? <laughs> um, you, I mean, you could. I mean, people had radio shows before that. You know, it's all about what they say. Um, but it it does help. I mean, people like to look at people's faces. <laughs> it it. it <laughs> it, it's you know you get a better connection when you can actually see someone talking but like it's not always like i listen to a lot of podcasts and there's been some that i've listened to for years that i, I didn't even actually know what the people look like i never even looked it up like radio lab i radio lab i've been listening to for many years and i didn't know what they look like until just like recently like maybe last year and it didn't matter to me. It was really, it was their personality that came through in their voice that mattered. Um, but with art, it's different. With art, it's, it's hard not to be visual and show stuff. So you kind of do have to make video. But um, I've seen a lot of YouTubers that don't like being on camera create like a little cartoon character of themselves in their videos. And that's really cool too. Like that actually, it added some personality to the video that, is different from just a talking face. Um, just thinking have you about seen something that? like that? I think, yeah, I've seen Jazza do that. And uh, I like the, the aesthetics you can do with like pixel art, art with that. So, thank yeah. you so much for your time. I, I just don't, I don't want to take up too much question time from uh, the others here, but I really appreciate yeah. that you took the, the time to come in today and talk to us. Thank yeah, you. thank you, great questions. Send my regards to Marshall. Okay. Yeah, uh, the other thing I would add is like, you know, it's kind of like when you're on Zoom, like everyone thinks, you know, cares about the way that they look, but like everyone is doing that. So like no one is actually looking at you anyway. <laughs> like everyone is like looking at the little camera, like the little, uh, their little face in the corner anyway. So <laughs> everyone has themselves pinned to their face. <laughs> <big. laughs> That's funny. No, I don't do that. Do you do that? Sahil? Yeah, I do do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh I can't help it. I like, I'm constantly, you know, subconscious about it, but that was why I love clubhouse. I love not having uh, video. I think it's uh, for art. Yeah, definitely useful, but um, most people don't care. You know, like think of like the, I don't know, someone you remember being, and you were like, oh, that person was like ugly. Like you just, no one thinks that. like no one, like the people who go around life thinking that like, they have other problems. Like you shouldn't worry about those people anyway. So, right. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, you know, like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Justin, welcome to the stage. Hey guys. Thanks. Yeah. My question to, or my, my question that I would love to hear your guys insight and experience on is in a field where you're kind of building out these platforms, um, with different forms of content, like video, and um creating basically like every day we we have a finite amount of time and energy to create things how do you think about making something sustainable with longe longevity that isn't just like a constant um uh, sand castle by the shore so to speak and that you know you're building things that will continue to provide like throughout the years um, might be kind of vague, but I would love to hear your guys take on like longevity and sustainability and content. 
are you talking about like ever making evergreen content that will be relevant decades from now is that uh also well not necessarily that but also like how do you best capture this energy that's constantly like like being emitted from perhaps traffic coming in and out like how do you best capture that at least you're in your perspective i'd love to uh, hear what you've done um you know whether that's building on different platforms or, or products or, or whatnot i'm just just interested in your insight um shoot i i want to make sure i understand your question so the traffic maybe i'm being vague about... yeah yeah uh, well, maybe maybe well, I'll, well, I'll try to yeah, answer ahead, it so. and then and then uh maybe I maybe it'll I'll... resolve i also you know just interpreting uh so maybe i'll be off too but you know like the, the, what I'm thinking you're saying is you're basically getting a ton of foot traffic, right? Like at some, you're getting people who discover at least a video or some piece of content. And like, how do you make sure that these people like become long-term fans of yours, right? And they kind of follow you when you've released your next video. And I, I just think about it just like in the physical world, right? Where like maybe, I don't know, I'm a tourist in a, in a different city and I go into a, a store cause it's, you know, in a popular place. Uh, and like, you know, what, what, what do they do? Right. Like they often ask you to like enter in, like start a loyalty program or like enter, give, you know, give them your email or your phone number. Right. Like every time you go to a grocery store, they ask you for that. Right. Like they're, they're, every business is trying to do this. Like they're trying to get people who may never come back. They're like, they're a line of contact so that they can reach them when they have sales or discounts or whatever else they may, they may need that for. So I think it's similar as a creator, like you just have to do that, right? You have to at the, yeah, Proko does a really good job. Like go watch Stan's videos uh, on YouTube. Like, you know, it like the you just have to call out like, hey, you know, if you're interested in this, you can go to this URL or you can subscribe to my newsletter and you can get this free thing, you know, this PDF, et cetera. Like you just, you just have to, again, you have to kind of create value, right? Like people are not doing this because they're nice, like they're doing it because they want something. Uh, and you do that and then, you know, you'll, you'll get email signups just organically every single day. And that will grow as, you know, that sort of content library continues to exist and compound. Yeah. Okay. I guess I, I think I get it now. <clears throat> um, so basically, yeah, what Sahil said is like, you need to drive traffic to like your home. Um, you got to realize that social media, including YouTube, it's just a way to get people to your your you know your store whatever your your house or whatever it is that where you are um because youtube might go away instagram might go away twitter might go away like you know all these things have have a lot like span we, we don't know how long that's going to be i don't want youtube to go away but don't put your all your eggs in this basket don't don't depend on it just like you know don't depend on like google traffic either on well, like a lot of a lot of companies are like completely dependent on google search traffic um and that's really dangerous to be dependent on another company for you to survive. Um, so always try to capture your customers or your followers in some way on your own. And a newsletter is something you own. Um, so that's what I I started from day one, actually. Um, when I started my YouTube channel, I created like a very, very basic website. It was literally, I think it was just like one page where it was like, hey, here's this video I just posted and I embedded it. And then I said like, sign up for my newsletter. <laughs> that was it. Um, I didn't want to waste time building out like an awesome website. I just wanted to get going on making content and, you know, building an audience. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? Justin. Yeah, those are all really good insights. Uh, yeah, my question is maybe a little vague, but it got me thinking. So I appreciate your guys' feedback. Yeah, I, I guess I, too. I, but before I, sorry, yeah, yeah. Go, go, I was go. Say, but before I get off the stage too, like um, uh, uh, the like the one thing you are capturing is like the audience. But you know, when you make the videos, um, you can't really capture the videos in a way like they live on YouTube. So I guess I would love to hear how you think about like making those videos uh, evergreen, so to speak, or do you do you try to do that? And like how to get the most squeeze out of them in a way. Um, and also the most squeeze of what? what you're gonna say. What's the squeeze like, uh, squeezing out? <laughs> I guess- Money, the, people? Not money, perhaps. Value. Like, uh, so, 
<laughs> so um like when you when you make the videos which take you know time and hours like they live on youtube you know and um yeah i guess uh sorry i probably haven't had my coffee yet today <laughs> but uh <laughs> i'd love to hear what you're about to say too so hill and then uh, uh i thank you guys i got some good info awesome yeah i i I think Stan's point of just like having a personal website, it doesn't matter like really what it looks like. Uh, you basically need two things, like you, you need a, or maybe three things you, you, or four things. I'm adding things all the time. You need a domain. Fine, you, need a, <laughs> you need a domain, some URL, right? You need a, on that domain, that domain needs to point to a website and that can be like, your name like it doesn't really need anything there and then it should also have a sign up form to your newsletter and you could use substack or gumroad or mailchimp or whatever else you want to use for that uh and then you should have an email address you know uh, like that people can you know can uh, email you and you can build these relationships like sort of one one by one and have these kind of like one-on-one -on -one relationships and th and that you can set up in like an hour or two you know, like the longest thing you're gonna have to wait for is like the DNS to propagate for your domain. Like you could do all of this in, in, in 10 minutes. Uh, and I, am, yeah, I, every time I have a side project, I basically do this. I like, you know, I buy a domain, I set up a little website, I set up an email, like this, it's just like, you know, maybe you can set up a Twitter, Facebook account, et cetera, right? Like you can have your social stuff, but really like the bare minimum I think is like a URL, uh, you know, and an email list, like some way where people can, you can collect emails, you can collect some, some 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 you know some some way to reach them if you if you ever need to if youtube or twitter or everything goes away right yeah actually this brings up a really good point um oh. this is a problem that i had a lot when i would start new projects when i was younger is i would get really excited about this thing i'm gonna do and then i would start doing all the fun stuff and like all the stuff that i i i thought mattered but really doesn't matter it has nothing to do with the success of this project you know like i would start a company and i'd be like all right i, I need business cards because how am i gonna talk to people um but i need a logo to put on my business card um so i gotta design this logo and then be like wait i have to put up a website on this business card so i need to make a website but i need to make sure it looks really good so let's make a flash animation for the header and I would like spend time animating the header. And it's like, wait a minute, what's my business? <laughs> like, what am I selling and how am I gonna sell it? Um, and like, what like what am I making here? And, and it's like, all of these distractions are fun. Like I was enjoying doing it, but it really wasn't, it had zero value. Um, and eventually I like, I figured that out finally. It took me like, I don't know, six years of just failing at things that to figure out that like, None of this stuff matters. I need to just make value. Um, um, and that's when I started my YouTube channel. I made a video and I made a website with a video and a newsletter subscription on it. Uh, and that was it. I didn't even have, I, like my logo was literally a font that I found that uh, it was like the Michael Jackson thriller font. And I just wrote Proco in that font. And that was it. Um, it took me probably 30 minutes to make that, that my logo. Um, so so yeah just like when you're starting a new project like think about the things that are the biggest the, the most risky things that will make the project fail like w imagine all the scenarios of how this thing could fail and focus on solving those problems um you know your the, the business card is not going to make your your project fail so stop wasting time on that yep yeah, yeah that's that's a good point uh nishanta how are you hey guys good morning this is great thanks a lot everybody um style and uh proko i've been watching proko's channel for a while uh i think like even five years ago i was trying to become a concept artist and your channel was like really cool uh, the question I had for both of you guys um, is right now I'm trying to create a digital product. Um, I have a YouTube channel called How to Dyslexia, and I'm trying to create a course. And I was just wondering what your framework is for the content creation part, the the lessons. How do you guys go about like structuring them, and what what's like your mindset even before you create them? Do you have like 
like outcomes that you want to like do you think about the students or do you think about like the content itself the delivery mechanism homework how do you guys think about content uh, as far as um, a digital product is concerned thank you so much yeah it's a good question um so i definitely think about the student um uh, absolutely i mean it makes sense because they're going to go through your content in in the order that you put them in your course and <laughs> if there's no sense to that order then well they're going to get confused um but also i think about how people actually learn like in a real classroom um and why those things are important so with every topic that i'm teaching i'll have a main lesson where i i present all the information all the theory just like loaded up with information for them so people take notes and they start thinking about this stuff and then i give them an assignment so i you know because just knowing this stuff doesn't matter you have to know how to put it to practice so then they they go they do their assignment then i put out some videos where i demonstrate myself doing that assignment so now these students can check their work they can actually see oh i did it like this the teacher did it like this um, they can start thinking about what they did and how they applied this information and how they could do it differently um, and then i ask my students to submit their assignments and i'll take those and i'll make a critique video where i actually take real student work and i talk about the issues and how to solve it and so all of these different formats of videos are different ways people could learn the content right it's like theory practice execute you know demonstration of execution solving of problems like all, all, this, these are all really important elements of learning um so don't just don't just make videos that present the content because that's that's step one um and that's the that's like what the fun part is that's what people like to watch is like because they think they're learning right they think that they're getting a lot of value out of watching a compact 10 minute video but then like the next day they're going to forget 80 percent of that content unless they go to step two step three step four and ingraining that into their brain um yeah so that's how i do it yeah i'd say like at a, at a high level it's really and this is all a lot pretty new to me as i sort of like begin my own journey to becoming my own kind of creator educator type person but i just think about it in it's in like what what the student will get out of this thing like what what will change about the student will they be more motivated more inspired will they learn a new technique will you know what are they actually what is the goal here what is this transformation and then you know yeah i, I have a similar kind of structure where like i basically would do a sort of lecture like a pretty information dense dump of of content uh and then you know basically i would do like that's half of it and then the other half is just like feedback and critique uh because i think that's like the sort of actually specific problem solving you know like this is how i would have done the, the thing that you did uh that stuff can be super super educational right because it basically tells you like what you should have done like what what the next five it gives you a roadmap of like oh these are the 10 things i don't actually know that i thought i knew uh and you don't need you don't need to do that with every student you can pick just a couple right like you, you don't you you but yeah i, yeah, I, think, you know, I, I make just, one critique yeah. video I make one critique video for each lesson and the people that submitted their assignments, you know, a month within the first month of my assignment com or my lesson coming out, they're the ones that make it into the critique video. Everybody who takes the course after that, you know, they, they just watch the critique video and they could learn from other people's mistakes. That's still extremely valuable. Um, but, you know, then after that, the community takes over and after I've already shown everybody how to solve the like the most common problems with this lesson, you know, the, the students that understand it will be able to help the students that didn't understand it. Uh, just a quick follow up question. How do you guys measure the success? Um, do you do you guys have like ways of like seeing if like kind of like a feedback loop like hey this lesson actually worked or like it didn't work or it's just kind of just like you just been doing it for so long you just have a feel for it um so with my figure course and anatomy course and portrait course which 
those are the three courses I, I, I taught first. Um, and those were the only courses I've so far taught online. It's taken me nine years to finish those three courses. Um, but with those, the, I taught those in person. Like I taught at a, at a school for six years and I taught those classes to real students. So I knew what people's issues were. Like I, I experienced, I, I had a bunch of students that I had to correct their stuff. And so, yeah, that experience was enough for me to, to make a course and understand the common issues. Um, with the course I'm making right now, um, it's, it's, the, it's a drawing basics course. And I actually never taught that to anybody and uh so that's a little bit challenging because i don't know but what i actually did was i started teaching my wife i started going through my lesson my, my notes and teaching her all these concepts and like that was so valuable because she she's not an artist she's like she doesn't even care and so like trying to explain it to somebody who has zero experience like that's perfect especially for a course like drawing basics, right? Um, and seeing where she gets confused is like, oh, wow, okay, I never thought of that. Um, and, but we only got through about halfway and, and then we had, you know, we have kids. And so it, it's a little bit more difficult to, to do that regularly. Um, but I, what I'm planning on doing actually is doing like a, a live workshop um, once I get, the whole lesson plan finished and having a small group of students that I test the content on and seeing how they react to it and then modifying my course based on that. I think I'm going to do that. I'm not sure. <laughs> but that would be a good idea if you're thinking about a course. It's just like get 10 people and teach them your content first. Like if you really care about quality and like you want something that you're you're making that to last decades, um, like that's worth it. Spend a month or two teaching a live workshop and getting people's reactions. Yeah, totally. I think I think never publish your first draft, right? Like most content on the <laughs> internet uh, is just a bunch of first drafts, uh, and if you sit on it far longer than you think you need to and as long as you're actually making it better and and getting feedback privately like you're the sort of the stuff that you actually ship is is going to be far far superior and like putting in two to three x the effort is going to lead to a hundred x outcome potentially uh yeah so yeah definitely yeah if you, you know yeah the way the way to think about it i think that's exactly right like this stuff is going to if it's good it's going to be read 10 or watched or listened to 10 years from now uh by somebody every day right like you start, you know, hundreds, uh, if not thousands of hours. Uh, so, you know, it's worth the extra five hours to make it better, you know? Yeah. And if you're, if you're, if you don't have a team of people that are like looking at what you're doing, proofreading your scripts, um, like if you're, you know, if you're a solo creator, get a friend that could sometimes look at it or I don't know. Um, um, but I, yeah, I mean, you, you have to have somebody that can can maybe look at your script or, or your video and watch it and give you feedback on it. Your wife, your your husband, your mom, whoever, like any kind of opinion, I think matters. But then also make sure you understand that these these are opinions that um, so take take feedback um, and analyze it and make it take what you need from from that feedback don't 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 like take feedback if it's subjective you know if they're giving you an opinion be like i don't like your red background it's like well you want it blue you know <laughs> um like observe what they actually um how your content actually makes people feel and learn from that um not individual opinions about specific things if that makes sense yeah yeah and you'll learn like you do that a few times and you'll figure out like oh this is the feedback that i should kind of not be not be really implementing versus this is the stuff that i i should be yeah. uh shafiq uh, welcome to the stage hey guys sorry it took a second there to press that mic button <laughs> uh still haven't had my coffee yet 
Uh, thank you so much for uh, taking my question. Um, I'm going to kind of go away from content creation to really your platform. Um, really curious about that. Um, can you describe how you're uh, engineering the feedback mechanism? How, how's that going to work in terms of, um, is this like uh, uh, a community feedback issue or are you trying to, are you going to create some type of um, rubric where people can understand how to provide feedback in a structured way or is it just freestyle? What's, how are you thinking about that? And yeah, good question for that. Um, so right now, what we have is under each lesson, um, there's a there's a tab called assignments and the instructor could post an assignment description and then people can submit an actual assignment. Um, so instead of just like a comment section, it's going to be assignment section and comment section. Right. So very specific um, focus on each on each thing. Um, and then after that, it just becomes a bunch of incentives. You got to incentivize uh, primarily if you can, you incentivize the instructor to participate um, in the in the community. Um, but, it, you know, sometimes instructors have literally thousands of students taking their class and that's impossible. So online, we have to find new ways and that's incentivizing advanced students. And the way we could do that is um actually rewarding them in some way um like you know gamification principles um and if they prove that they are good critiquers they can actually start getting paid to do that right um they can get more visibility on the site and so if the if if the platform grows and it becomes a place where artists hang out and, and, and try to post their work and, and get, um, and people who are hiring are on there and looking for good artists, that becomes valuable. Like a student, a high, like an advanced student who helps other people getting more visibility is a very valuable thing. It becomes a social network, right? You can get a job like this. You can get discovered. You can find friends. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's about the the UI, the gamification, cr creating incentives for people to actually do this. And then you asked about how like how do you get people to actually give good feedback? Um, right now, the the only thing I've done is um, I have a Jurassic podcast where we talk about how to get give give good feedback, and we're probably linked to that. Um, and we do have an article written, and we we're linking to it in the community rules of like how to give and receive feedback actually because receiving feedback is also important um, but we'll see we'll see if there's problems if, if we see issues where people are just constantly providing really bad feedback we're gonna have to find solutions for it and that's our focus and so i think we will i think we will find solutions yeah i mean you definitely will it won't be that difficult <laughs> but um, yeah, awesome. Uh, Carlos, last question, then we can wrap things up. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my uh, what call or whatever this is, but um, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Uh, first, let me start by saying, Proko, dude, I love your channel. Brad Colbo, I see you down there, dude. I love your content. <laughs> Brad's here. Yeah, Brad, Brad that dude. Half an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, if you guys haven't seen his perspective tutorial, you need to upgrade your life. Go see that video. It's great. I've been sharing it with a bunch of people who had been asking me about uh, perspective. Anyway, with that being said, uh, I wanted to see, I wanted to see if you guys had any um, insight on, I have my channel and I'm slowly but surely growing it. And I think I'm at the point now where I have enough content and, and folks know who I am. Uh, but I want to be able to collaborate with more of the art-related channels, um, a lot like what film channels do, like Maddie Hapoya. And I know you guys are probably tired of hearing uh, Peter McKinnon and Maddie Hapoya and all those guys. But the thing that I like that they're doing is they collaborate a lot. Yeah, so I collaborate for, all the time. 
that's become i collaborate now more than i actually make original content <laughs> it's kind of, i don't know um i think are, are you finding those color are you finding those collaborations helpful yes absolutely and i think my audience is as well um but like go look at my collaborations on my youtube channel like click on a video and if you see my face just go to the next video find one where it's not me and you'll notice that it's we still keep the same quality of content like we 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 have a very specific way of making content like we we script things out we plan it out we 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 plan the visuals we create the visuals and then we edit and we try to make it as as good as possible and so with these uh people the artists that we're collaborating with we take them through the process there's like a training process we actually take them through first we t we make sure they have good equipment if they don't i'll send them a fucking camera sorry for my language um i send them a camera and um make sure it's good i'll send them a microphone i'll make sure the lighting is good because literally like they're making a video for my channel so this has to fit my brand um and and so I will approach making a video with them in the same way I approach making a video with myself. I'm just as serious about about that. And so, um, yeah, there's a whole training process that goes from from equipment to getting them comfortable on camera if this is their first time making a video, which a lot of times we do. I'll approach artists that have never made videos, but they're awesome artists and they they're known in the community as being really good teachers somewhere. I'll approach them and be like, you want to make a video? Like, we'll, we'll, we'll do everything. Um, and like, we'll promote you. And, and, and a lot of times they say yes. So you don't need to actually uh, collaborate with people who already have a lot of like followers on YouTube, although that helps, but just getting good content on your channel is also extremely valuable um, and your audience hopefully i mean i don't know your audience it really depends on your channel but my audience i think really does appreciate uh when i bring on new minds to the channel and share information that i wouldn't share because i don't know that stuff um so yeah that oh he left Oh, I just i just moved in the audience because i do have to okay. run for another meeting um okay so i think yeah, unless good. you yeah, awesome. Uh, well, thanks so much for doing this. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Nahil. Uh, Appreciate okay. it, man. Bye. All right. Bye.